Okay, next order of business is to format this form so it looks a little bit more attractive. My form is uniquely identified with the Form 1 ID, so that'll be critical. I'll set the width of this form to about 400 pixels. And the background color, a light shade of yellow. There we go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to have the labels for each of my text boxes to the left of the text box, but I want them to be in a nice vertical row, look a little bit neater. The labels in my form have a set width of 110 pixels. This will help to ensure that the text boxes to their right line up nice and neat in a vertical line. The form labels are going to float to the left, which means things that follow them, their text boxes, will show up on the right side. And each label is going to clear a previously floating object. I want, I want the text boxes to show up on the right, but I don't want the other labels to show up on the right side. And the input, the text boxes, are also going to have some margin bottom of 5 pixels and width of 150 pixels. This gets my form looking like this. All of my labels are 120 pixels wide regardless of how much text is in there. And since the inputs are showing up on the right side of the labels, labels are floating to the left, they'll all line up nice and neatly at that 121st pixel, so to speak. So now that we've got this structured, I notice I'm not getting my city and address to activate on click. This must mean that my for attribute in my label tag doesn't match up with the ID attribute in the input tag. Let me go ahead and fix that. Here we go. For is address 1. I had a typo in there. and a typo in city. There we go. So now my form is looking a little bit more complete. The next thing I want to do is I want to put a drop down menu for the state field. So in between my city and my zip code, I'm going to create a new label. For state. But instead of using a normal input tag, I'm going to use a select tag. Now the select tag will create a selection menu, or drop down menu, menu if you prefer. And within the select tag, I'm going to have a series of options. There, I've actually got uh, options for each of the 50 states. So for each of these, there's an opening and closing option tag. Each of them has a value, and this is important. Each of the states, or each of the items, or each of the options within my selection menu needs a unique value. If this is going to be delivered to a script, it would be the name of the select tag, in this case state, state equals whatever the value a person chose. So if somebody chose Alabama, the script would receive state equals AL. So the item in the value of an option doesn't really need to be as human friendly. It's something that a computer program or script would read. The text in between the opening and closing option tags though is what a person would see. And this is what I have on my web page now. For state, I've got a drop down menu where a person can choose from any of the 50 states. Notice that it doesn't have that space beneath it like my other input tags do because my CSS put a 5 pixels of bottom margin on the input elements, not on the select elements. So I'm going to go up to my CSS and modify that. 
the input ele elements within my form 1 and the select elements within my form 1 will have that same margin bottom and width. There we go. So now it's a little bit more consistent. So these are two types of form input elements really. We've got the input type text and we've got selection menus. Now there's variations on the select menu that you can do but I'm not going to go over those at the moment. This is one of the most common applications. The next thing I want to do is create an area where we can use some radio buttons and some uh, check boxes. So I'll jump back over to my markup, to my form, and in a new field set I'm going to create a new field set below my address information and this can be um, shipping information or shipping method. Now drop down selection menus are actually pretty good for that but I'm going to use radio buttons. And my radio buttons are going to, like my input um, text boxes, are going to have a label for, and I'll go ahead and choose standard, And I'm going to do an input type equals radio. And my name here is actually inappropriate. Your name is going to be this, and this will make more sense in a second, but I'm going to do name equals shipping, value equals STD. So a couple differences. Radio buttons are those little circles that you can click on and choose one of several. I'll have a label for it and then I'll actually have the radio button. Input text boxes, it's good to have the label to the left of the text box. That's the, that's the norm and it's pretty familiar. Radio buttons and check boxes are a little bit different. I'm going to take my input and put it in front of my label. There we go. And while I'm here, let me go ahead and create a second radio button. You never, you well, not never. You'll rarely just have one radio button. And this can be express. There we go. So first I'll test it, then I'll come back and explain a little bit more. Ah, now I've got some formatting issues because of those previous items up there, so I'm going to make a couple little changes. Instead of formatting my original form based on the form itself, I'm going to format it based on the field set it's contained within. So I will take this field set and give it a unique ID, and I'll call it uh, field set one. Instead of there we go, and then for my CSS, instead of formatting the labels in fields form one, I'll label them in uh, field set one, and I'll do the same thing for these. Make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing here. Standard shipping or express shipping. Notice radio buttons only let you choose one out of the series. Now to create that one out of the series choice it's important that your multiple radio buttons share the same name. So both of my radio buttons share the same name and their values are different. So if this is submitted into a script it's going to get shipping equals STD for standard shipping or if somebody chooses express it'll get shipping equals EXP for express shipping. So with radio buttons labels are to the right of the input and they share the same name that keeps them grouped together. 